Get Warrior Tough, Mental Training 101 with Andrew Whitman and Dutch Coleman. And now back to Andrew and Dutch. All right, back in the saddle. Dutch and Andrew, Andrew and Dutch. Most monumental hour in media anywhere. It's the Get Warrior Tough show. All right, Dutch. So we're talking about elite uh, team identity, and it is it, all this these concepts that we're going to talk about in this research. Uh, it, it is in sports, and we're gonna, we're going to look at a study that happened in sports team, but it's all rooted in elite warrior mentality and you know spec ops teams. So mm -hmm. um, this is very interesting because whether a team identity created improved performance or whether the feeling of identity arises out of better performance is always the chicken or egg question. Mm -hmm. Right, so they, like, wait, is it because we created the identity that it improves our performance, or is it that our we have um, great performance and then we get an identity that came out of great performance? And to be honest with you, Dutch, it really don't matter to me which one came first. But the important thing is, but either way, you still have to have a strong team identity. No, but there's no question about that. They correlate. Whichever one there's came no first doesn't matter. Yep, there's no question about that because I've seen it done both ways and I've seen it survive both ways. I've seen people go in where they created this image, this this identity statement, they about and what they wanted to be and who they were, and they had had no success to that point. Yeah, my great, they, the one you said I just got the person that comes to mind who did that was Muhammad Ali. There you go. That's a that's a great one. He called himself yeah. a champion and he surrounded himself by everybody who would have to call him the champ before he ever won any championship. Mm hmm. And, 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 and so we, we've seen that. And then we've seen people who have developed that confidence and developed that stature based on um, their track record, based on right. what they've done. And it gets stronger and stronger and they stronger. They kind of grow so into it. Right. They kind of grow no into question. it. Right. No question. So and um, e either way, there still has to be a strong identity. Mm -hmm. If you want mm -hmm. better performance. Now, there was um, research performed out of the University of Sussex. And um, they looked at 45 different sports teams across 14 different sports. And they did a six-month study where they're watching these teams for six months, 14 different sports. So it's not just – but they were all team sports, okay? So they probably weren't watching golf unless they were playing the Ryder Cup or something, okay, unless they were team, right? So <laughs> shout-out to all my golf buddies. Okay, so the team idea – they found this. This is a quote right out of that study that team identity caused highly significant increase in both perceived and actual team performance. That, in fact, after six months, the teams with the strongest identities outperformed those with weak identities by that shocking 53%. Mm. Amazing. Again, we, we already addressed the 53% number. Right. That's, it's just that's mind-boggling, man. Oh, it just really is. That, Man. So why and, and, would you not yeah. have a team? Why would you not work on your identity? And and, and work on it first. Because if I'm going to get 53% out of the gate like that, just by working on something that's going to help me in a whole bunch of other ways that we always talk about anyway, I mean, I'm investing in that. I don't know about you, but other, other people listening, but you got to invest in that. Right, and we'll talk about, I'm going to just throw out, one of my favorite teams, you know, is the New England Patriots. And the reason that I really love the Patriots, really love them, is because they have an identity of sustained excellence. Yeah, and, and, and everyone you, can, yeah, and we've seen that. We've seen that play out in front of us, right? We've seen that. Yeah, and if you don't buy into that, where are you, where do you, where are you going? Cleveland, baby. Someone else, yes. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say it's someone else's team. Miami, <laughs> Cleveland, Buffalo, anywhere but here. You're on your way out. If you don't buy into an identity of sustained excellence, you're out, man. Now, listen, you know people that have actually been in the, you know people that have been in the system, like players under the Belichick. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily fun. Right. Right. It's, it's mission focused. I mean, it, it's not, it's not about, it's not about how you feel. It's not about uh, what you like or don't like. It's about that mission. And the, and the good news is, is that, you know, you know that mission when you walk in. So no one's forcing you to play for the New England Patriots, right? Right. And and the other good thing about it is, is, man, all this, all the way you felt about how you didn't like this, how you didn't like that. Man, it's such a beautiful thing when that mission's accomplished, though, and you're standing there with that Super Bowl ring or that Super Bowl trophy, yeah. and you're kissing that trophy. You forget about how hard it was and how you didn't like this and how you didn't like mm -hmm. that because that mission was accomplished, and that mission is much bigger than anything you could have achieved somewhere else not focusing on on, on that on mission, mission, right? That's huge. 
focusing on them is focusing on them. It's huge. Like same thing with like you look at like Alabama again. You know people that worked for Nick Saban. Also, identity mm-hmm. of a culture of excellence, sustained excellence is very mission focused. Like you said, those guys are like forget about going home to have dinner with the wife and kids <laughs> during the season. <laughs> right? It ain't happening. Yeah, you're having lunch at the facility. Yeah, it's being brought in. You're not going out for an hour and a half goofing off. No. Like no, man, we're we're working, and that's why they they've achieved the success that they've achieved. I think they won half the national titles the past eight years. But, I mean, you, I don't know. I lost count. <laughs> yeah, you don't get that. You don't get that by lollygagging around. I no. mean, it, 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 those guys are serious. But Matt quotes this. He he does another. He he shouts out another team that is mission focused is the U.S. Army Rangers. Mm. He says, "Here's their creed. Their creed states this: Readily will I display the intestinal fortitude, mental toughness. Excuse me, required to fight." on to the ranger objective and complete the mission even if i'm the lone survivor Mm. wow so you got words like objective and mission in there right intestinal fortitude yeah required i mean it's uh it's 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 amazing ready you know and and that's something uh, we're talking about the new england patriots we're talking about the you know uh, alabama crimson tide so you now you're talking about the Army Rangers, right? Yeah. So now we're we're naming a bunch of elite organizations yeah. um, that we all know have performed at an elite level for a long period of time. So the proof is in the pudding. And yeah. if we all want to be, we all want to achieve, and we want to be like these people. Then we're going to have to be like these people, right? Well, and you know, but that's funny because what the human machine usually does is say that they're cheaters or they, you know. They hate on them and they criticize them and they tear them down and. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the average minded. That's the folks that are yeah. really just jealous. That's steeped in jealousy. Right, and, all and, those that, and those but are the other fifty-three. That's the teams that are performing fifty-three uh, percent less. Right. That's the eight and eight teams and below. That's anybody that didn't make the twelve and four cut. Well, I, and I, I tell you what, when you talk about um, the human machine, the human machine, they want they want those rewards, right? Yeah. But they don't want to do the work. So when mm-hmm. I used to talk to to uh, football players that were trying to qualify uh, for uh, for college, you know, they always had their idols in the NFL. And, but they didn't, you know, the kids, they didn't want to do the schoolwork. And I said, oh, so I'll use Barry Sanders as an example. I'll say, hey, so Barry Sanders is your idol. Oh, yeah, man, he sure could run the football. He could do this, he could do that. So, you know, he had to go to college too, right? You know, he had to go to Oklahoma State, which means he had to qualify, which means he had to take these tests, which means he had to do a schoolwork, which means he had to do, hey, do you think you're better than Barry Sanders? Oh, no, 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 no. So what makes you think that you can <laughs> bypass all these measures, but, 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 but the great Barry Sanders had to do it? Yeah, you just reel him in with that trap. Dutch, you yeah, and I you are know. so alike with that kind of stuff, it's scary. I mean, you walk them right into it. But that's what we do. We, yeah. want, we want what the New England Patriots do. We want what well, we Alabama want has, right? Work, right. But I want the hour and a half, two hour lunch breaks. Yeah. I, I, I want to go and hang out for a couple hours doing nothing, but I want the national championship trophy. Like you, you, I can't be like them unless I'm like them, or unless I have you know some very, very similar traits. I mean, so I've got to be want it, right down. It. They're yeah. eating their cake and they want it too. Right, <laughs> right. There you go. <laughs> so if you heard, didn't hear what I just said, I said they eat their cake and they want it too. That's the actual correct rendition of that because you can't want your cake and eat it too. Like if you you already have it, but if you ate yeah, it and then cake. you still want it, yeah, you it's you after you eat it. And then you still want it in front of you. That's what they right. want. Yeah. No, I, but focus on the mission is a huge thing, man. And, and, and this really does bring teams together. Like the Marine Corps mission, we're taught from day one is to, um, you know, destroy the enemy with fire and maneuver. Close with and destroy the enemy by fire and maneuver. That's the Marine Corps mission. Close with and destroy the enemy by fire and maneuver. Like that's how long it is. It's not this big, long 18-page. We know that's our entire job in the Marine Corps is to close with. That means we run to the guns and we destroy the enemy with fire and moving around. Mm. That's our entire mission of the Marine Corps. They drill it into you from day one. Mm. Now, this, now, but this is cool because it's so, and every elite team has a unique identity. Although, like if you're an outsider, like so, you know, if you looked at like New England and, um, New England Patriots, if you looked at Alabama, if you looked at Clemson football, you look at those teams that are elite, we would consider elite teams, it all seems like it's the same. Like they all do the same stuff. It appears like it's not really, they're all like similar. 
Uh, same thing if you looked at like Delta Force, Navy SEALs, Marines, and you know, uh, Rangers. Mm-hmm. But every one of them is very unique inside their own thing. So here's the thing: like, mm-hmm. ne- like I, it really, it doesn't. I'm okay with it because people don't know any better. But when they say that I was a Navy SEAL when I'm a Marine, I don't really like it. And when they right. say I was Secret Service when I was really Capitol Police, U.S. Capitol Police, I don't really like it. But to them, on the outsiders, it's all the same thing. You're a federal agent. You're like you, they assume you're FBI or Secret Service. If you did anything in the special operations community, you're Navy SEALs. That's just like the that's like saying Kleenex, right? Instead of tissue, right? Your Navy SEALs. You just say Kleenex for everything, or Coke for all. So- Coke for all sodas. Products. Yeah, you like in say, Texas, yeah. man, they'd be like, "Hey, you want a Coke? Yeah, what kind? Doctor Pepper." <laughs> what? <laughs> that's, that's it. <laughs> but uh, but you're right. They they all within. They all see the differences, but. But the only way we see it is similar is that you have to be in that same footprint. And it, yeah. it, it, within the organization, they'll correct you in a second if you try and say that they're the same. Yeah. But you're an outsider, so it's okay. You know, I, I kind of let it pass because I don't even want to get into a big, long discussion. But, but mm-hmm. the uniqueness of every team, like, so, Dutch, you played for Clemson. It, like, like, it would not be like you would, you know, not like it if I came up to you and be like, yeah, Dutch, you know, you're, I, you know, great job being an Alabama player. But no, you're an elite football player, but you're an elite team, but it was Clemson, not Alabama. It's akin to doing right. that. But, um, but and so inside, like I guarantee you, inside the Clemson locker room, don't come in there talking Alabama this and Alabama that or saying that you're like Alabama or comparing you to Alabama. That's a no. We, and, and the mm-hmm. reason that, and there's a very important reason inside that locker room, just like Marines, listen, when, when we're uh, overseas and we're downrange, I love the Air Force, I love the Navy, I love the Army. But we're back here in the rear, you guys suck, okay? <laughs> right? So we're better than all of you. And we really, everybody in those elite teams really need to believe that as part of their identity, just to have that psychological edge of the, we, the belongingness and the strong identity. And so I know it sounds like it's splitting hairs, but it's really very important to create that internal identity inside the locker room, if you will. Oh, oh yeah. We, and we're, I know we're right up on a break, but l- let's talk more about this belonging when we get back. Okay. Yeah, that'll be fun. Are right, you listening to the Get Warrior Tough Radio Show with Dutch and Andrew? We'll be right back. 